round-the-clock marvel of modern medicine, the effort to save the life of Congresswoman Gabrielle Giffords, whose brain was pierced by that bullet two days ago. When the Congresswoman came in the door, did you think she'd make it? I knew. You knew she'd make it? When I hear someone's here shot in the head, can, they can follow commands, and I'm thinking this is what we're here for. Congresswoman Giffords was one of 10 patients being triaged at University Medical Center. The trauma teams here move quickly, especially with brain trauma. Uh, carotid pulse is all right. It's a practice U.S. doctors have adapted from military doctors triaging injured troops in war zones. And the general of this team is retired Navy surgeon Dr. Peter Reed. Today, let's not forget those who died, but let's also not forget to get past our sorrow and move forward with our lives. Now, I understand I was on TV a lot at that time period, and so my family would ask me, Dad, you look like the grouper. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you smile? <laughs> so I started trying to smile. <laughs> And it's interesting that uh, I started getting emails saying, you know, you seem a little too happy. <laughs> no one knows more about the human brain than Dr. Peter Reed. How much do we know? How much does your business, the experts, actually know about how to figure out, A, how severe it is, and B, when somebody's ready to go back into the dangerous combat role? There's always more to learn, when the, and the research in the traumatic brain injury is still in its infancy. Obviously, the brain is very complex. And fortunately, the vast majority of people who get traumatic brain injury do recover and return to their normal lives because it is majority uh, mild traumatic brain injury. I learned how to do mass casualties, obviously, in the military world and not only in a theoretical basis, but got to uh, practice my trade in a wartime situation. Um, and that was useful for me because I brought those practices back into the civilian sector. You know, we had 18 Marines coming in, and the first six, all, all of them had tourniquets up at their thigh. And, you know, uh, in a long story short, of those six guys, you know, we lost 11 legs. Um, it, you know, you, didn't think, you don't think about it again until it's all done, because you just, your, your mind's just firing. And you just, you just, you, to me, when I get in that situation, and I think this might be the reason why I want it, and I, I know, and I strive for it, uh, but I don't know if it's the endorphins that kick in or things like that, but you know, I feel like I have clarity, you know, and I just have absolute clarity and control over that chaotic moment. I know what's going on, where things are going on. Um, when people are panicking, they rely on me to be, you know, uh, the captain of the ship, that knows what's going on and be able to say that's okay. Now, in a squad-like environment, group of five, group of ten, for me, uh, I know that I have certain natural uh, capabilities. And I think this is what's so important for you to understand what you're capable of doing and what you're not capable of doing. For the 95% of us who need to have leadership skills, we need to be leaders of small groups of people, groups of people around 10, what I call squad size, or platoon, which is 30 people. Uh, sometimes you'll even go to a company size, 100, 150 people. So how do you lead that group of people versus 5,000 people, 300 million people? It's quite different.